everyone, welcome back to another episode of Stripped by Sia, your podcast for strippers, sex workers, and all the fancy naked people in between. I'm your host, Steph Sia, aka Kimchi. Um, I like to say Kimchi on stage, but I actually don't know when I'll be dancing back on stage, so I'm just going to stop saying that. But yes, fellow exotic dancer, um, cam model and streaming, I just also need to you know, get back on there more, more consistently, but you can find me on there under <laughs> Sia on camera and I was a sugar baby for many years and of course I'm an adult uh, content creator as well um if you are tuning in for the first time uh hello and welcome uh this show is all about the adult industry it's all about sex work uh, specifically destigmatizing sex work and all the areas are that are kind of adjacent to it um so by that I mean I bring on you know different talent models we also bring on people that are from nonprofit organizations we also have allies that come on the show as well so I just do that to really paint uh, an accurate picture of what sex work actually is because I know that there's a lot of you that are listening to the show in order to prep for yourself to jump both feet into the industry or maybe you are a fellow sex worker or maybe you're even a client to learn how to be a better client those ones also exist as well but i do the show mainly to educate and kind of humanize sex workers so i'm glad you're here um every single week is different i bring on a different guest on every single week and this week is no different. I am bringing on a past guest who's joining me on a different topic today, but this person has not been on for a long little while since episode 106, guys. Like (laughs) we're over well over 200 already. So it's kind of wild to me. And I will be announcing who this is first. And if you didn't look at the title, you'll already know who it is. But we are speaking about photography talking about safe practices, what to expect during a shoot, what to expect after the editing process, etiquette, because that also is a thing that, you know, often gets overlooked. So we're just here to set the record straight with that. And because, you know, like good photos and photography and working with photographers is pretty much essential to this job. So, but before we get into that whole aspect um, of the show, I do want to say hello to our wonderful Patreon subscribers. Hi, (laughs) thank you so much for all of your support after all these years, Uh, after all these years, basically past two seasons because you guys started in season four, but I just want to say thank you so much for your financial support. Um, All of your money, as you know, goes to hosting on my website, which I really need to update because that's another thing I forgot to do, but that's what we're going to do in spring break, (laughs) which is not when this episode is being released, but (laughs) um, yes, website hosting that's where your money is going to sometimes for adult industry events um because those can get kind of expensive as well so thank you so much because yeah your money goes directly there um i do want to say hello to those who are in the second and third tier um you all get a fan recognition shout out on the show on each episode so i just want to say hello to Snoo Snoo from Germany, we've got Justin Erickson from Vancouver, Washington. We've got Red Door Products. Hello, Dan from Seattle. We also got uh, Bea York from Seattle as well. We love her. Um, McKenna King, also a past guest, but from Edmonton. Eric Araujo, Moxie Mayhem, Selena Money, and Geyser. Thank you all so much. Um, if you're curious in checking out uh, the Patreon or becoming a patron and supporting the show, you can do that by going to patreon.com slash stripped by Sia. And we have tiers for as low as $4. Um, that gives you access to all the upcoming episodes. You get the episodes a, a week earlier now as well. You got a lot of raw and uncut footage uh, too. You get a sneak peek on guests and topics that I'm trying to develop and things that are behind the scenes. So lots of cool creative work and that kind of process this goes on there so again if you want to check it out it's patreon.com slash and if you're still here hanging out um it is time because i am so excited to introduce our guest or should i say reintroduce our guest because she hasn't been on here for a while as i mentioned last time she was here it was like episode 106 and i want to say this is going to be like episode 230 so it's gonna be it's been it's been a minute and i haven't seen this person in person in like two years so it's been a while happy to catch up with her and we're Again, talking about photography today because she herself is a photographer. She's the owner of Cactus Camera Photography, also a a fellow adult content creator as well. 
specializing in pea content. And I just want to give a warm welcome to the wonderful Cactus Cutie. Welcome back. Your warmth is felt. Thank you so much. I am so happy to be back. So happy for you to be here. And like, honestly, we we were catching up like pre-recording. I was just like, I miss this person. I remember how much fun we had recording last time. So very happy. Seriously. I like, I already know that this one is going to be so much fun. We were already laughing before this. (laughs) I'm here to have a good time and also educate. Yes doing all the things. And we do have a ton of stuff to talk about today, which you're obviously an expert of. But before we get over on that whole piece, I do, as like you know before, I would love to flip the mic back to you, Cactus, so you can tell the audience in your own words and terms about who you are and and go. Go for it. All right, who I am. Uh, I'm Cactus. Uh, As a model, I'm known as Cactus Cutie, but as a photographer, I am Cactus Camera, and all of that is spelled with K's instead of C's, because I just really like uh, K's, and I like alliteration. Me too. uh, (laughs) Stop saying I'm like, I'm, we've got some stuff in common, for sure. Um, I was a photographer before I got into like modeling and sex work. I started photography in like 2011, uh, like right around when I graduated high school. And I really started doing like boudoir photography probably around like 2000, I'd say 14. So it's actually 2013, 2014. So it's been like 10 years since I've been doing boudoir photography now. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, <laughs> thanks. thanks. Uh, <laughs> and um, I've learned a lot. I've shot a lot of different things. Um, I started shooting for Suicide Girls uh, as a model and a phot- photographer. I do not shoot for them anymore. That could be a different discussion if we want to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> I've been planning for years to talk about it on YouTube, but whatever. Uh, that'll happen eventually. But... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, photography, uh, honestly is really a huge passion of mine. It's like people say that they see me when I'm the happiest is when I'm behind the camera. And it's so, so true. Um, so it really just does bring up like my happy creativity. Um, and I really love getting to make people feel really, really good about themselves on the other side of the camera during the prop, like before, during, after, I want them to like, look at those photos and be like, wow, I feel really good about myself. And I had such a fun time doing it too. Um, so (laughs) I, I just really love doing photography. Uh, right now I'm mostly shooting just sex workers, uh, like femmes, non-binary trans. Um, I, I'm open to shooting a lot of people, but mostly right now, I just, I can't take on a lot of work right now because I'm also a full-time sex worker and I do have a vanilla job too. So, uh, I've got lots going on. I'm trying to be creative all the time in different ways. I'm ADHD, so I can't like do one thing. (laughs) Girl, same. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, you do so much too. I know. Yeah. It's a trend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, this is so... I, I didn't know you are doing it for that long already. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. That's huge. Huge, huge, huge. And, like, I love how you mentioned, like, you started off in, in boudoir because maybe people don't know this, maybe people do, but there are different photographers for different occasions, different, um, you know, settings and landscapes and stuff like that, too. So, like, I really would love to talk about you know, when you are selecting a photographer, where do you start? Because again, as mentioned, there are so many different kinds of photographers and I already, I don't want to start this negative, but yes, there are a lot, especially like a lot of men with the camera, men with the camera kind of thing. And like, I'm just building my portfolio and they have nothing on their Instagram, nothing on their website. It's just like buildings and corporate shots. So like, let's talk about, <laughs> I'm just basing this on experience from well, like, so seen. true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so uh, <laughs> sure. Um, I think like starting very basic off, like if you're trying to find a photographer, um, Instagram is a great place to find people. Uh, you can just type in uh, wherever you live, like 
Texas photographer or Illinois photographer or wherever you are, um, or a specific city or something. And people will be doing like hashtags. They'll be putting that in their bios. Like there's lots of ways you can find that. Um, what I really like to do is I find, um, photographers based off of models that I already follow. Um, so I'm like, Oh, they, sh I really love those photos. Uh, and it kind of already gives you a sense that Maybe there's a little bit more of a comfortability there with that mm -hmm. photographer rather than somebody who's like totally random off the internet. Um, as for uh, vetting a photographer, which I think is really, really important and everybody should do, mm -hmm. um, you as a model should be worried about your safety, even though, yes. uh, and you you mentioned like dude photographers have like uh, buildings and stuff in their profiles, but there <laughs> are... A lot of dude photographers who have hundreds of thousands of followers who yes. have beautiful shots of usually just butts and stuff, and which is great. I love butts. and <laughs> uh, But great photography, but then you hear like, oh, that is like this person has been doing this and this and this to these models, uh, and they're still around years and years later, and people are still shooting with them because they see all these people um, in their in their profiles thinking, oh, all of these people shot with this person, this photographer, that must be safe for me to do too. And that is not true. Like yes. I have definitely shot with photographers and they've posted my stuff and I didn't feel comfortable during the shoot. Or um, I've seen a lot, like a lot of people have contracts with um, like, not just like modeling companies, which I don't think a lot of us really work with, but like Chatterbait or like big like sex work companies, like they have their photographers and stuff, which not everybody out there is a good, not uh, not just a good photographer, but like a person who cares about the well-being of the models there mm. and isn't there for a different intention. Um, so to, the way to vet, I think is a great idea, is to go through their profile and individually message some of the people on that they've posted. Yes. You can, if you really want to, you could, like, message the photographer and ask them for testimonials. But, like, you've mm. got to know that they're probably biased. Yes. And um, do also uh, be careful about what the models say back. Um, there yes. was this one time where I messaged a model because some photographer reached out to me. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'll message like one or two of the models. And uh, I got this message back that said, oh, yeah, he's a great photographer. Just be really firm with your boundaries. Yeah. Not cool. And turns out that that dude has is like a very well-known predator. And I'm very glad that I didn't go through with it. And this person was a known apologist for his behavior. Uh, um, we which stop so that, people. <laughs> A hundred percent. So that. that's why I really suggest messaging a couple people uh, that has worked with that photographer or like if you have a good friend, like ask them their opinion or ask around uh, other photographers who may have worked with them. Look in their tagged photos, look on their profile, like you'll be able to see lots of different people who um, have worked with them. Um it's it's really all about safety and like we mm -hmm. can't all be sharing a blacklist on all of our profiles being like don't work with these people right and sometimes you can't always trust those blacklists either um so <laughs> i don't want to scare people right away because <laughs> there are really great people out there there are wonderful photographers it's just it's you got to think about your safety first. You've got to do your research. Um, and especially if you're going to be one-on-one -on -one with this person or you could be a friend, which we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. um, your safety matters, especially if it's in a nude or boudoir or that kind of um, vi like vulnerability. Yeah. 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 Uh, I feel like there's so there's like a power struggle there with the model and the photographer because the photographer is taking the photos, they're editing, they have the art of you. Um, so I think you need to be as responsible as you can about who you shoot with. And even if you do vet, you may not have the best experience, but you also might have an amazing experience. So 
Yeah. <laughs> I love how you turn that around, Cactus. That was <laughs> so great. We're like, we don't want to scare you, but... We've got to be like, optimistic. <laughs> yes, but we had, we do have to keep our safety in mind. That's, that's first and foremost. So I'm actually glad that we're just bringing that up right away because, like, again, like, I haven't talked about this since, like, season one, but also we talked briefly about model safety on the episode with Ariel Anderson on the season um especially her her role as a submissive specifically and like how those boundaries can also differ from just general model safety so I'm really glad that we're again having this conversation so many things I can touch on there oh my gosh yes follower counts and numbers that's not always like a legitimate uh way of being like is this person that just I'm going to automatically bet this person because like that must mean they're okay. Um, No people no, that does not always mean it's okay. So again, really, really do your research. Um, And I said this before on Ariel's episode, but also messaging um, the models that are, you know, are not, or like Ray down in the feed, like go message them. Cause again, there's biases that <laughs> come with photography and you don't know what kind of relationship or dynamic that this person, this model has had. Uh, or sometimes when you do ask the photographer, then they'll only give you specific names and not the rest. So to me, that's actually kind of red flaggy. So you should, again, go beyond that and not just take people's word for word. Cause Unfortunately, there's just not a lot of people you can trust in this industry sometimes. So just want to throw that out there. And this is also not just for the sex industry, but in modeling in general. So, oh, absolutely. It's in the fashion industry. It's literally everywhere. Yes. People with cameras can either create beautiful art or they can use it for a different intention or they can be both. But we have to be aware um <laughs> It's hard. It is hard. <laughs> it, it sucks. Hard. But um, truly, it is about your comfortability during the whole thing. Um, that's that's the main thing. Every the, My comfortability, sure. But, like, the model's comfortability absolutely matters the most. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, like, since we are talking about, and this is the sex industry that we're in, um, when you do, you as a photographer, are you usually coming out to models to be like, hey, I want to shoot this boudoir shoot with you, or hey, I'm really interested in shooting this implied shoot with you, or is that something that you bring up later in conversation at the shoot, and we are going to talk about what happens at the shoot, but like, I've had, again, coming from personal experience, have had people come out to me and be like hey this is what the concept is like would you be interested in this and then I've also had photographers try to push my boundaries on a shoot to be like hey actually are you want to do you want to do some like implied shoots or more nudity things I'm like we never agreed to this stuff and that puts me in like really weird awkward position I don't like it let's totally. talk about that <laughs> um I have been on that side too as a model uh being pushed out of my boundaries for what I had set up for the shoot and then feeling like I owed the photographer because they spent all that time and money to shoot me and blah 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 so um I (laughs) um wait what was the question I was so bad. Like both ADHD brains right here. (laughs) Once I start talking about something, I forget the first thing that was asked. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, no. Like just talking about like how do you as a photographer approach models? Because is that something that's communicated Mm. first or is that communicated at the shoot? Sounds like a dumb Uh, question, but. No, it's not. I think it depends on how the photographer works. So um, I used to do concept shoots and those were more for fashion and stuff. And maybe if there is boudoir, I wouldn't expect nudity. Um, I, especially since I like sharing stuff on Instagram, I love to get safer work shots anyway. So I'm, it's all up to the model if they want to be nude or not. And that's actually most of my, most of my shoots, I am either traveling in a certain state and I say, hey, book a shoot with me. I'm going to be here. Uh, I'm either booking this studio or this Airbnb or whatever. Um, And then the model comes to me and they shoot whatever outfit they want to be in and they tell me what they want to do and I shoot it. But I'm there to facilitate the poses, the lighting, uh, the mood, the comfortability, um, and make them feel really good. Because sometimes it's like with a camera, you're just... 
modeling by yourself with a self timer. It's totally different. Um, so I, people uh, come to me to shoot whatever they want and I'll do that. I have never wanted to pressure somebody into nudity. Um, I personally have no gain for it. I think I do have some beautiful nude shots that I've never, ever shared, uh, because also in my contract, um, uh, or it's either contract or it's like discussed before or after the shoot, uh, is, are you comfortable with me sharing your nude photos online on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, uh, fansly, Patreon, whatever they, people do now. Um, but me, I just want to respect their comfortability. Like, that's it. I'm just here to have a good time and take some photos. I if you want to be nude, great. If you don't, also great. Love that. And we are going to touch back later on on the topic of comfortability later on during the shoot. But you also mentioned something as well, contracts. Um, I really would love to hear about that because sometimes, and again, if you're starting out, that's okay. Like, um, we're just here to provide you with as much information so you can just tackle, <laughs> tackle all these photography. <laughs> You're just going to gonna eat you. this up just like nom, 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 nom. It's just like, I, if, <laughs> you know, whatever sticks to you, great. Um, I, yeah, for contracts. Um, I, okay. <laughs> There's quite a bit because I really recommend, even if you're a model, I think if the photographer doesn't have a contract, I think you need to have something at least written somewhere that you can screenshot, show that you have evidence, you know, social, uh, like you have the proof or whatever that you talked about certain things. But I really do think you should get a, a contract. And if you're a photographer and you don't have contracts, absolutely start making one for yourself um I started years and years ago when I was doing like just regular people and it was, it was like the basic contract just like you agree to me taking your photos and posting them or whatever now throughout the years I have added in things that as I do shoots I'm like well you know what this model and I discussed this I think it actually might be better for us to just have it written on the contract so I've been adding things in like um I have uh, way, uh, adding in, um, sometimes I've had, <laughs> my contract has been changing recently. So uh, there's sometimes like sections to put uh, your comfortability, like please don't post this sensor or like please post it only if it's censored or please don't post open vulva or please if new top nudity is fine or nothing, whatever. Um, I've also added in like, if you don't want me to post a certain amount of your photos, uh, there's like an additional fee because I have a low price because I can share my stuff and get more clients. But if you don't mm -hmm. want me to share it, then it's an extra fee. Um, okay. I have putting in your tat, like all of your social media and your websites that, um, I can tag so I can properly credit you. And then I have in a section where, I have in all of my tags so that models can properly correct me. And I also have a statement that says, um, if you do not tag me correctly and you refuse uh, to tag me correctly, or if you put like a filter or something on it, um, on top of my own editing, um, I, there's going to be like a, it's a small fee, but it's like a little bit to show like, Hey, this is really important because tagging is very important. And I'm sure you and oh I can gosh. get into something about that. Yep. <laughs> we will talk about that later. We will talk about tagging. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. And then I have a section that says, um, I agree to the model using these photos for promotions, prints, uh, photo sets, whatever. Because some photographers only want to have people post on, like, they don't want them to make money off right. of it. So mm -hmm. I always just blatantly say, yes, you can, just so models can see it in the contract. Um, and I don't know, I think that's kind of it. And I also don't allow, like, um, editing on top of mm -hmm. my photos. So I kind of, like, blatantly say, like, you can, you can use it in your story and you can put fun text over it. And like that, I don't consider editing. I consider mm -hmm. editing like, um, 
like putting an Instagram filter on top of what the hours I put into figuring out the coloring for your photo. Like, why would you do that? <laughs> I've had it done so many times. But, um, oh but, uh, and also just like how to tag me and how to correctly do it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. There's, I, I really think that contracts are so, so important. Um, oh, also just to confirm that my model is 18 or up. Like that's also yes, in there too. Yes. Very important. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think contracts are easily missed because people are like, I don't want to do paperwork. Like people in the sex work industry do, do do that too when they do collabs. They don't do paperwork. Yes. And then that one time you don't do paperwork, it's like, shit, I really should have done paperwork. I really wish that we had agreed on certain aspects about this because I just don't feel comfortable with how things are being done. So mm-hmm. I think it it helps everybody get on the same page, even though it's a little bit of extra work. Um, yeah, I, I do mine. Actually, I do mine over Doc Hub. So mm-hmm. it's not during the shoot. It's like whatever. You can just exist in the shoot radiance. And then once I'm done editing, then I will send you the contract. You sign that. It's like a easy You put in your signature, blah, 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 and then put in your social media and your sites and whatever, um, honestly takes five minutes tops. Um, and then I send them their photos afterwards. So, um, I, I think it's a huge part of the process. It makes me feel comfortable with the models knowing that I know what they're going to be doing with my photos and that they're going to tag me and vice versa. So they know that I'm not going to make them feel uncomfortable or use their content in a way that wouldn't make them feel comfortable because it is their image. So, yeah. Oh my gosh. I appreciate this so much. Seriously. Cause like, honestly, yes. Some of us were just really don't want to do contracts because it's just we're lazy and we do it all the time and we collab and all stuff. But also like it can also be very overwhelming looking at contracts. And, you know, I'm really glad you're able to break that down for us and what this stuff actually means because sometimes people just don't read it and we just don't know what we're signing. But make sure that you are going through every line item and you are understanding what you are signing up for, what you are willing and willing to not do, uh, not share. Cause at the end of the day, this is your face and body and everything there. So just again, just coming at you. So you are well informed and well equipped when you go on your next shoot. Totally. Okay. And I, I appreciate all questions. If you have any questions for me about the contract, about anything, like, I, I'm not like, you guys signed the contract, no question, blah, blah. It's like, <laughs> feel free. This is an open conversation. Like, we both need to feel comfortable about this. Um, and I want to make sure I get the best consent I can of you. So I'm just not disregarding any of your boundaries. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, on that topic, I think boundaries does go on the topic about like getting prepped and getting ready for a shoot. Um, maybe we can pivot to that kind of conversation. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 we can. I was gonna say, a, I was gonna say a bad word, and then I corrected myself, and I'm like, who <laughs> am I? <laughs> I have never heard you say a bad word ever, but (laughs) that's so funny because I I do all the time. Uh, It's just my, it's my persona is I come off as, oh, I'm just such a good girl, but I'm not. (laughs) Um, But as for boundaries and comfortability, I like for like prepping for a shoot and and those two combined, um, I think that if there's anything that you're going to be uncomfortable about during a shoot, you can either tell the photographer beforehand or during the shoot. Depends on if you think it's going to like change how the shoot is actually run. Um, I, I'm a person who's like, if you want to give me all the information you want to, great. Or if you just want to show up and I've got a cute little set and you just come with some lingerie or a cute outfit fine by me. It's all about how the other, the, on the other side, how you want to prepare. I am showing up the best I can. 
Um, but I do love when people send like Pinterest boards. Um, they tell me what kind of look they're going for or what they're using the photos for. I think that really helps me is like, is this going to be more of a high end thing? Is this going to be like full service sex worker using it for their profiles? Or is it going to be like somebody using it for their only fans? Or is it like an Instagram, like everything? Cause like if it's Instagram, then we've got to make sure it's safe for work. If it's like, uh, only fans is like, <laughs> whatever, let's do it. <laughs> let's have fun. Um, but yeah, it like really gives me a sense of like how I should prepare for the shoot as well. And for my mentality and how we can kind of interact. Um, I, I, um, I don't know, like, I guess for, I don't know, as in like preparing for a shoot, I feel like, <laughs> I almost put my shirt down too far. <laughs> um, I think getting prepared and making sure that you're going to be comfortable. Like, so I, I think maybe we should talk about like what to bring for a photo shoot. Sure. Um, yeah. I, number one, water, plenty yes. of water. You know, I'm the queen of, I love hydration. I, yes. I'm, I got my <laughs> bevies with me all the time. Um, yes, yes. Oh, that's such a cute glass. Oh my God. Thank you. <laughs> so cute. Uh, but, and then I've got like my raggedy, why did I do that? Why did I do the ASMR thing? I've never done that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's okay. We're in for a treat right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but I think you should make sure that you are going to be healthy and be your best self during the shoot. So bring water. Um, make sure that you're drinking throughout the shoot. Um, I know, and here's a big thing, and this might be a trigger warning for people with either, uh, just around food. Um, I, I have had quite a few models show up to a shoot and be like, I haven't eaten all morning because I don't want to blow. I don't want to look bigger in my shoots, but Honestly, I gotta say, even if you ate a granola bar, if you had some fruit, if you had something even light, I don't care what it is, put something in your body. Um, give them, give your body nourishment because the way that you show up to shoot and how you feel in your body really is going to translate on camera. And I, not even just that, I care about your health. I, mm-hmm. I genuinely, I become like such a mom on shoots. I'm like, do you have water? <laughs> do you have food? Can I get you something? Uh, do you need a condom? Whatever. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cool mom. Um, uh, but I really, really think that how you show up to the shoot and how you feel about yourself is absolutely going to reflect. So your health very important Mm -hmm. um for other things like bring um bring uh outfits bring like bring what you were gonna prepare but then bring extra just in case you never know if it's gonna rip it's gonna get it dirty if it doesn't fit like you thought it would um or if it just doesn't look good with the set you always want different options Mm -hmm. um bring makeup for touch-ups bring hair accessories bring your (laughs) Bring your uh, hairbrush, literally everything you can think of. I honestly would rather somebody show up to the shoot with like five bags of stuff than bring nothing. Um, But I understand not everybody has a bunch of stuff to bring and a lot of things. That's why like if you ever shoot at my, I have a studio in my apartment. I'm happy to let you borrow anything that I have. Um, I try to have different sizes, but um, that would be cool if I could have more options for people um (laughs) but also what I think is really really important is like uh about like comfortability and boundaries like you can discuss this with your photographer beforehand or during but I really think you should tell them like I've had people say hey I don't feel really comfortable about about my chin or like this scar that I have right here or something and it's like instead of me going through and like editing how a person I personally don't like doing a lot of beauty editing just Mm -hmm. not even because it's a lot of work but just because (laughs) I really want the person to know that that was their true beauty um I used to be in e-commerce and doing fashion photography and they made us made everything thin every 
thing oh is gone. Gosh. Everything is perfect. So I am trying to step away from that and create beautiful sets and shoot with beautiful people and show them that they're beautiful uh, just the way they are. So that's amazing. But if you feel uncomfortable, that we're not going to try to like embrace something that you are not comfortable embracing yet. It doesn't have to be like, a, oh my God, girly, you can do it. <laughs> uh, but it can be like, okay, I understand that. You know what? Maybe we can do some poses where your face is turning away or where your body is angled a little bit differently. I always want to make sure. And then like, uh, during the shoot, I guess we could like kind of transition is yeah, like I'm always it. checking in, Good. always checking in, uh, like every five to 10 minutes I'd be like, how are you doing? How are you feeling about the photos? I always show my favorite photos while we're shooting to the model. Because a lot of people are like, are you going to show me? Can I see? And I'm like, yeah, yes. absolutely. <laughs> you need to see what you're creating. Mm -hmm. um, so I really think that helps not only with the model's comfortability, but their confidence and like excitedness and like, oh, I see what they're seeing. Okay, that's cool. Um, or sometimes I'll have a mirror on set so they can see themselves, especially like people who are new to modeling. They don't really, they feel very uncomfortable about posing. So right. if they can kind of see themselves in a mirror while I'm shooting, then um, I feel like that really helps them be like, okay, this is my body. This is how it moves. This is how I feel comfortable when I look in the mirror. So um, <laughs> there's a lot. I'm rambling. I am no. so excited to talk about this stuff. I love that. No, this is so <laughs> informative too. Because cool. maybe some people listening have not gone to shoot or maybe just like, haven't gone on great shoots and stuff too. And I wish weird. the best shoots for all of you. Yes. You all deserve a good shoot and fun. <laughs> um, yeah. Speaking of actually what I also love to do, I have a photo shoot playlist. Um, yes. Or I'll ask the model like, Hey, if you don't like my music, is there anything that makes you feel comfortable and like love grooving it. and having a good time? Uh, Cause that's, what I want to capture is I want to, I, I always like capture and shoot. Those are such aggressive words for <laughs> I'm taking a picture. Um, I, I want to really represent somebody's happiness. Like I truly love that or somebody having a good time or feeling comfortable in their own body. Um, I just love that. I genuinely do. So, um, anything to do to keep the, the vibe going, um, especially like if I'm not having fun, the model's definitely not going to have fun. So that's oh, why yeah. I'm like, really, I, I call myself a model cheerleader. Cause I'm always <laughs> like, yeah. Oh my God. Oh my god, like I'm <laughs> freaking out all the time. Um, <laughs> I love it. I can pick yeah. it up. <laughs> we should do a photo shoot! I know. Last time we were, no, I was in, can I say can I say location? Arizona? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Last time we were in Arizona, like I was just there in such a tight timeline and it didn't quite work. I, I know. Really doing convention out. stuff is always so hard, especially when you're traveling out of town. Yes. It's like trying to cram so much into every day. Ridiculous. You need to book like in a separate week. Or like a, a, a additional three days just to do other things. <laughs> I no, I end up doing that, and then you spend way more money, and then do you get it back? I don't know, maybe, but it's worth <laughs> it for the creation with other people. Yes, yes um, it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of like what else during a shoot. Um, always make sure you're on the same page. Like I, like I said, I always do check ins. Um, and it's not just like a comfortability check in, like, how are you feeling in your body? It's also like, how are you feeling about the photos? Like, do you feel comfortable with how much we've shot? Do you feel comfortable with what I've shown you? Do you think that you're going to get the outcome that you want? And if they say no, let's keep shooting. I'm like, fine, cool. I want to make sure that, cause you're paying me. I want to make sure that you get what you want out of this shoot. Um, let's see. I have a list. I'm, I wrote so much down. <laughs> no, I love uh, this. I want to miss a thing. <laughs> and I, I don't want to miss a thing. Love that song. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Can you, oh, okay. So, like, um, if there's, this is a, a really, this is something I've been trying to practice for a while is getting consent during the shoot. 
Um, mm, so when a model's hair is like out of place or there's a strap that's kind of like twisted or like or something tag. is tucked. Right. Ugh. I don't always go up to the model and just be like, fix. I say, hey, right. I see this tag. Would you mind if I went up and I put it back fix into your it. shirt? Yeah. Good. I, because like, People are not asking to be touched. I don't care if I'm a woman and I feel, you know, I'm trying to give off a safe vibe. It doesn't matter. Um, it depends on their comfortability. And uh, I want them to know that I am only going there to do that one thing. And then, you know, I, and every time something happens, I go, okay, wait, can I do that again? Or, hey, can I now touch your hair? Or, like, five minutes, even if it's five minutes later, I still check back in. And they're always like, yeah, 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 you don't have to ask. I'm like, I'm going to ask. Just because I want to make sure that we're both on the same page all the time. I don't want to spook you, scare you. Um, mm. So, a great habit, or, by the way, that's so good. I, just in general, I think we yeah. should ask people if we can touch them before we touch them. Consent That'd be the great. Sexy alls. <laughs> ask first. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I think those are like my my main things for comfortability. Mm -hmm. um, besides, just like I. Yes, I'm a, a, a fun, uh, oh my god, I'm like so fun, you guys. <laughs> uh, but I, I really try to put that on because I want that model to feel really fun and having comfortable on the other side. Um, so I really think that like the whole environment that you create beforehand, how you're talking to them, uh, if you're not in their DMs, like, I think you're sexy, um, right. fire emojis when they Ugh. post a picture of their butt. It's like, right. as a photographer, you are not here to be anything else except for a photographer. Exactly. You are, I, I can, I can say great photo. I'm going to say great photo, great pose. But mm -hmm. during a photo shoot, there is one time I was shooting with a guy and I know I was shooting boudoir, but this is one person who was pushing my boundaries, made me of shoot course. nude when I didn't want to. And oh. also all of the comments were like, yeah, that's sexy. Oh yeah, that's so fucking sexy. Like all, and I'm like, Stop. I want you to say that it's a good pose. I want you to say that it looks good on the camera. Like yeah. that is what you should be concerned about as a photographer, unless yes. you have clearly stated beforehand that that comfortability like you were comfortable with that language I don't think you should ever be saying those words to a model ever agreed and there's so mm -hmm. many different ways as you have already laid out to properly and I do believe it's a proper way of communicating things to models in a professional manner because there's way too many instances of unfortunately photographers and people really like towing the line and it's just not a great feeling and again it's that power that you're trying to fight with and just stop doing that like please photographers if you're one of those creepy ass photographer people just stop doing that it's so gross like it's just gross behavior and it makes me never want to shoot with unfortunately it's been men um it's and it's really impacted some of the models you've shot with or shoot with because that is I'm a direct response to that. I do not shoot with men anymore because of other issues too. So, and Kat is like, me same, too, same. me too. It's I've sad. maybe, even if you have a good experience, then I've even heard things afterwards being like, oh, that person does the, and I'm like, damn it. And I don't want to say all male photographers are bad. That is, yeah, it's not that. It's not an all men are bad, all men suck kind of thing. It's just like liter like this is our legitimate lived experience that mm -hmm. at least ninety percent of the shoots I've been on that a male has a man a man a man <laughs> a manly man has been a photographer. I have either not liked the photos, felt uncomfortable during, or. Uh, felt uncomfortable after because they kept mm -hmm. pursuing and trying to talk to me in ways that I was not comfortable with. It's like, I'm yes. here to be a model. I'm not here to entertain any type of fantasies you have with me. Yes. Yeah. Like I remember one of the shoots I had, oh my God, now we're going to horror stories. Um, <laughs> one of the shoots I had, I remember like the photographer 
brought a bottle of wine to drink and this is like one o'clock in the afternoon mm-hmm. I'm like is this appropriate and i'm just like i like wine so i'm like i guess it's okay eh? and then of course like looking back at it how like silly was that idea and that i'm that not is, gonna uh, yeah it's, it's really common unfortunately there's oh. a lot of people who i've heard have shown up and there is alcohol waiting for them at the set me i even at like i i smoke weed I sure I do it recreationally, but mostly I do it med- medicinally for my pain and my anxiety. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel like it's important to talk to if somebody is one sober or uncomfortable yes. being around intoxication. Yes. Already, you've broken a trust and boundaries and stuff like that. I ask, hey, is it okay if I smoke this? Either you know I can step out, or if it's during the shoot, just let me Love know. Um, like I said, it's all about consent like every aspect you think you're bringing to this like that you haven't thought about think about it (laughs) there's probably things that I haven't even like I mean there's experiences that are gonna teach me more you know like oh shit I should have done that you know like I'm not saying every person has to be perfect I'm just saying just try to see the other person as another person like if you were in that position how would you like to be treated empathy goes a long way let's just say that Right. We love empathy. We do. We love her. We she do. Can, she yeah. can sit with us. <laughs> She's, she can sit with us for sure. <laughs> I mean, this is all great in terms of like, you know, managing your expectations during, um, before and during a shoot. But can you tell us like what your process is after the shoot? Because of course it's always that fun waiting game. And then, but like what, and again, this is totally subjective as well, depending on photographer to photographer. So what is an appropriate wait time for your photos talk to us about this um this can vary from photographer to photographer i've had people give me photos the next day and i'm like how well i am genuinely impressed (laughs) like (laughs) me as a photographer i am not like that at all um (laughs) i my me personally i say four to six weeks I take a little bit of time because I also, photography is not my main job. I have other photo sets that I'm editing before yours usually. Yours as in I'm talking to yes. you and you <laughs> have gotten a photo set from me. Um, and uh, so we we do the shoot after that. Um, yeah, it usually takes four to six weeks just be and also I'm a person who likes to sit on photos for a while if I I go through I do a couple different kind of color editing on a couple different photos and I step away and then I come back because me I just don't work that way (laughs) I cannot just go from here to here like I always want to come back I'm like oh I have I found a way to make it better and I found a way that why I wasn't liking it this way or why I liked this so I personally I am more into the art of the photography. I want to make sure that whatever the person gets back, they're really, really proud of it. And Mm -hmm. I've had some photos done by photographers who are really quick. And one of them told me like, oh, shoot, I need to edit 10 photo shoots this weekend. And I was one of those. And then the photos I got back were like not even cropped. There was stuff still in it. It was just like the it was just like haphazardly done and I want to make sure that what people are getting back (laughs) hydration (laughs) what people are getting back they're going to be so happy with and they don't feel like "Eh, I wish they had done it this way I wish they had put more time in it like I want to make sure what you get back and plus I also end up giving bloopers and stuff too because I think those are funny (laughs) like if your eyes are half closed or you're making a weird face I love yeah Honestly, if you just wanted to show those, I'd be happy. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I take a little bit. I've also had some photographers take three to six months because they have such mm-hmm. a big lineup of shoots. So, like, you can either be really quick at it and, and get your photos back really quickly or the photographer is going to take a while. And hopefully that amount of time is worth it to you. Um, sometimes it's either included in the price, how or however they set up because they're like, hey, you're going to get it in a while. Or 
sometimes photographers will give you like a, if you really need a photo like sometimes I'll go in and be like yeah it may not be the best photo but if you really need something right now I'll do it but mm-hmm. um I've also done things where it's like hey I know I have a deadline um you know the price will be this because it's going to be a little bit quicker or something like that um so it's it just really matters about when you're ready to if you need them back immediately or not but with me (laughs) you may have to wait a little bit but (laughs) trust me the photos that you and I usually end up editing a little bit too much (laughs) because (laughs) I get so excited and I'm like I like this photo no I like this photo so um me I try to and I also communicate like you're feel free to check in about the photos like um especially after like I don't know I say after two to four weeks you can start checking in if it's before that don't bother your photographer unless you had agreed on a certain deadline that you need the photos by time frame totally understand but especially if it's a free photo shoot don't Mm -hmm. expect it back immediately either because like right I'll do some trades with some people but then I get paid photo shoots and I need to edit those first so it's like you know even though you're a free photo shoot like yeah, it was free, but you're going to have to kind of wait to be pushed back into my line. Right. Because there's people. Yeah. So, um, I've had, you know, I, I know every photographer is absolutely different and how they give out their photos and how they do con like, but, um, I, I think it just needs to be communicated with the model. Mm -hmm. Usually I'll do it like after the photo shoot, I'll be like, okay, so, once I finish editing the photos, it'll be, you know, four to six weeks. You can check in with me. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'll send you a contract to sign. And then after you sign that contract, I will send you the Dropbox folder of, uh, you know, whatever photo sets and how many outfits we did. Um, and then after that, they can do whatever they want with it as long as they tag me correctly. Yes. Um, I love it when models post photos from our photo sets. It just makes me so happy to see that somebody is like happy about the photos and they want to share it. Um, But yeah, I think every photographer is different. So don't expect the same thing from every single photographer. I've had people be like, "Uh, but I've had photographers do this, but I've had photographers do this. It's like, but I'm not that person. I have a different life. I have a different way of doing things. We're all different, but it's just about communication and knowing what your expectations are. I love that. No, and this is so important too, because like, yes, it's we've. I'm sure, yes, I've heard so many stories about like you know pestering the photographer and just asking the photos are ready and stuff like that. I've also had, um, and this happens a lot too, the raw files. (laughs) (laughs) I told you this question is going to come, but (laughs) tell us, tell us your trauma with raw files. So. I love, here's the thing. I'm going to, I love that people have confidence in my photography that they think it looks good right out the camera. I love that. Thank you. (laughs) But you don't realize that there's so much more that goes into a photo once I give it to you. Um, You're paying for my time, my art, my direction, and the outcome of the photo. You're not paying for access to all the raw unedited photos you're not gonna like them that much they're not as saturated they're not um as quality looking uh I go through and I you know I do saturation of colors not even only that but like I crop things out like there's you can't expect every single photo to look good and also Mm -hmm. I feel like if you want then why did you oh my god (laughs) we need the water again it's a dry climate okay (laughs) Um, but I think expecting that from a photographer is a lot. If you Mm -hmm. really want that and you think you have a photographer who wants to edit it or you're going to do it or whatever, you need to tell that photographer ahead of time that that is what you're expecting and you've got to be prepared to be turned down because a lot of photographers won't do that unless you pay the right price. Like you're paying for 
the entire catalog of everything that person shot of you. Like I sometimes, I'll sh- sometimes I'll shoot up to a thousand photos during a photo set. Really? <laughs> sometimes yeah. it depends on how many edit, like how many uh, photo. What's the word? Outfits. How many outfits we yeah. do, <laughs> um, and just what they want, and if they felt good about each. Th- it just depends. Um, I'm a little snap happy. But, like, that's, you're getting so much out of me then. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's just not really valuing the what else I put into my photos. And, like, you're hiring me because you liked my vibe and my style and my aesthetic and how I edit. Then why are you taking that away from the art? Right. So um, it's, there's there's a lot of reasons why people don't give it out. Um, but really just, you're not going to be satisfied with it. And, uh, a lot, I don't shoot on raw because my, my camera, my raw files are fucking huge because this thing (laughs) I shoot on an R5, um, and it's, it's a massive files, massive files. Cause the photos are huge, which is great, but I shoot on JPEG now, but most people shoot on like CR2 or like LR and those are like specifically for that camera to go into editing programs you can't Mm -hmm. edit those in a regular program like like I don't know PixArt or whatever (laughs) um you you need to know what you're doing with the photos so um raw photos no that's my womp womp don't yeah, do so I had to ask that a question because I didn't. Of course, <laughs> it's you like know, every photographer's nightmare. Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. <laughs> my husband was asking for that from our wedding photographer. I'm like, babe, mm. no, <laughs> you no. Did the thing. <laughs> Are you serious right now? I'm like, hell's fucking no. I mean, it was like cool no. to see the raw files because our videographer included that. Shh. Sure. And that was cool. and But there was sure. a lot of shitty things. There was a lot of shitty weird angles and blurred and like sh- shit that you'll want to see. Right. Basically. You're getting every, you're getting the, the photos I accidentally took of my cat or the, <laughs> the blurry photos that are in between stuff. Like that's what raw is kind of. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's kind of neat. Like if you want to see them. Like, uh, if you just want to see them, not have them, I'll show them to you. But I am also not that kind of photographer who, um, actually, I should say the kind of photographer I am is um, a person who, oh, I lost it. <laughs> see, I'm trying to flip myself on there. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Here, here's what it is. So I, um, I edit based on the photos that. I like and I think the model is going to like. Mm -hmm. I do not say, here are the raw files. Tell me what you want me to edit. Mm -hmm. That's that's not something I do. Um, I, it's, that's ask. Maybe you ha- picked a photo that is really hard to color edit, or maybe you picked something that is just not going to turn out the way you expect it to, mm-hmm. or maybe you pick way too freaking many, and then I'm like, hey, okay, so if you want that many, then we'll have to do more on the budget, and people of don't course. usually want that. Right. So then people feel like they're not getting enough. I don't know. Mm. It's just like I would rather go through. I love the curation of it. I love culling. That's what it's called. C U L L I M G. You go, you (laughs) cull through your, yeah. And it's like picking out which photos you think are going to be best. And I'm going through hundreds and I'm picking out 40, 60 at most. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I go a little crazy and I do 90, but that's (laughs) because I just go nuts. Um, And I get excited. But for most of the time, I'm not picking every photo for sure you're not gonna want every photo absolutely Um, yeah oh my god I'm so glad that we addressed that (laughs) you're able to talk about it um I know we touched on it earlier too but kind of to wrap up this portion of the show talking about how to be a safer photographer for your models I think you know we started off the episode with safety I think it's also appropriate that we also end this from your perspective as well so Go off, sister. <laughs> uh, like safety as in like how to talk to people or after the photo shoot or... However you want to 
disassemble that question. <laughs> mm, okay. Because yeah, we um, talked a little bit about safety. We're also talking about, we also talked about comfortability as well. We talked about language, communication, but also yeah. I guess, to sum it up. Um, yeah, I guess to sum it up, uh, comfortability. That's literally, that's the key. That's the one thing you should be thinking about. Uh, your comfortability, uh, comfortability, all, but your comfortability always comes uh, first. The model, you. Um, as a photographer, your comfortability also matters. But um, like I said, there's a power dynamic there. Mm-hmm. And I think you should just really be as aware at how you can be the most respectful person and professional right. professional really like I I mean you can say it for any industry like you wouldn't want to work for somebody who just like slid in your dms and was being slimy and like hey right. I want to do this business deal with you or, like can I take <laughs> you out to dinner or no. <laughs> I don't know it's like no I'm not gonna work with you I want to feel respected as a model I want to feel like you are going to value me as a person first not as an object and not for your fantasy or whatever because I am in my own world I'm in my own body I'm not not in your world like my your world does not revolve whatever you are not the center of the universe <laughs> I guess um, I'm trying to say. <laughs> thank you I appreciate that um I as a photographer it's really hard because I am a woman photographer and sometimes that is the thing that gives me a quote unquote like leg up. And it really mm. honestly sucks to know that because I would rather people just have a comfortability with anybody they shoot with. But time and time again, I've heard people that they are just not comfortable shooting. With them. I mean, myself included, um, mm. just not anymore. So I at least I know that I because I have that. Now I feel like I have this extra responsibility. Everybody should in general Mm -hmm. to make that person feel like they are safe, comfortable, and that, yeah, they're just respected. Like this is a personal, this is a professional uh, relationship that we have. Sure, if we become friends or whatever, cool. Like I love that. I love making friends with models. It's a bonus, but like that is not the reason you should be shooting with people. Is That's if not the you goal. want, if you want the bodies, right. yeah. Um, right. I want the art. I want the creation. I want to share of photos of how much fun we had together and the cool sets I made and wherever we shot or whatever. Uh. When I was in AVN uh, this year, I rented this, I got this hotel and uh, on, in one of the rooms, I cleared everything out and created a whole photo set inside there and just had like models come and shoot there. But it was this really, oh my God, I can't wait to edit the photos. Um, (laughs) I'm still behind. There's, I shot so much at Expos LA and AVN back to back. Uh, Back to back too. And I'm oh, sad yeah. I missed you at AVN, but I was also very like weird and antisocial, which isn't a great thing to do at conventions. So there you it's go. well, it's hard to always be. I mean, those things are like there's so many people all around all the time. It's yes. a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's but a lot. we'll we'll see each other another time. I Our paths will cross. <laughs> yeah, and we'll have to shoot for sure. Yes. Um. Did you did you want to uh, do you want to hear about what it's been like since I lost my OnlyFans? Oh yeah, what the hell? Why didn't I go over that? I meant to do that earlier, but yes, please, because like if you were listening to Cactus's original episode, episode one hundred six, a, a PR nightmare gone wrong. Um, basically, the gist of that episode was that um, because of this article, working with a certain PR agent that we both know, um. She had lost her OnlyFans, which is a huge stream of income for you. And that was, like, really fresh when that came out. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like that just happened to you, like, maybe a week or two prior to that recording. But I would love an update before we go into questions. So Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I 
still am not allowed on OnlyFans. Um, oh and I now a bunch of people are getting kicked off, so I don't feel yeah. like special anymore because yeah. I'm not like the girl who lost her OnlyFans. It's like everybody's doing it now. It's like it's everyone's like, lost cool. it. So. Yeah. <laughs> everybody's going to. So I went to Fansly, which I had talked in that uh, episode as yes. well. And Fansly has been treating me pretty well. Um, yeah. I will say it's I trying just as hard, if not harder, on that site, and I'm not making as much as I was on OnlyFans still. Mm. Um, and it's just because OnlyFans has such a name for itself that people would rather they uh, they already have an OnlyFans account, so why not yeah. just subscribe to somebody else instead of creating a new website, having to get yeah. verified on that. It's um, easier. They get it. It really is. Like, I was able at first, I got, like, 100 subscribers, and now I'm, like, I'm not able to keep that up anymore. Like, yeah. even, <laughs> like, 100 felt, like, amazing, uh, and that's not even a bunch, I feel, yeah. but now I definitely don't have anything near that, and I am struggling for Girl income. Same. I'm sorry uh, I mean, that. it's okay. I mean, I, I this working it's not even just inflation it's just corporate greed right now Mm -hmm. um it's just making a lot harder and especially if you have a disability like I do I have to eat a lot of special food which is very expensive and pay for things that are expensive and whatever so um and this is that's why I do this job is because I can be at home most of the time go out for a shoot come back sit down edit like I can take care of myself um but Fansly has been, and I really highly recommend Fansly if you are looking for a new site and you can use my referral code if you want to sign up. Uh, Message (laughs) me on Twitter. I'm at CactusQDPs. But it's it's been hard. It's been really hard. And now, especially with new laws coming into play and states even banning porn and... It's been so much harder to be a sex worker just in general, not even just somebody who isn't on OnlyFans, just like I'm on so many sites and I'm still trying to just scramble it all together and make it work. Um, Mm. So it's it's difficult out here. (laughs) But we're trying. We're We're trying. trying. We're trying. And I'm still I just want to keep creating art and making people happy. So I'm 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 doing my best to do that for sure. Um, but to all the people on OnlyFans, congratulations that you've stayed this far. <laughs> <laughs> Staying on there, yes, but my subscribers have not. So, <laughs> well, I mean, like, I people can barely afford groceries now. How are they going to afford porn? You know, like, oh, we're yeah. the last thing, we're, actually, we're the first thing that gets taken away when people, you know, we're a luxury item, we're entertaining. Of course. Oh, yeah, and I'll, I'll have to do an episode of that, too, because I've been meaning to talk about that in general. Yeah. But stay tuned, stay tuned, it's still developing, I still got to find someone to talk with me about that. But hmm. we're still in this mm-hmm. episode for right now, and there are a few questions, the nerdy detail questions that have come in, and I would love to discuss them with you, because I'm also curious. Um, yeah, what do the people want to know about me? <laughs> <laughs> well, the people on Twitter want to know, dot, 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 what editing software do you use? Um, so I use Lightroom for like 99% of everything now. Lightroom's um, awesome. Lightroom's great. I used to be a Photoshop, all Photoshop, and then... I stopped doing as much beauty editing and now most of my stuff is just color editing. So Mm -hmm. I've made my own like presets that I can just use and tweak and you know, whatever I got to do. Lightroom's great. I highly recommend Lightroom. Um, There's lots of different things you can play with. Not on mobile, on desktop. Yes. Mobile is very different. Big difference. There's a Lightroom classic and then there's a Lightroom like, um, Wait, like, what is there was the classic? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Adobe Lightroom and there's Adobe Lightroom Classic. If you have the one that's like on your desktop, that's not like a cloud service. That's my favorite. The cloud mm. service one is nice if you want to be able to edit between your phone and your computer, but it just doesn't right. give you as many like editing features that I usually use when I'm editing. So, meh. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, Photoshop is great if you want to do some extra stuff. Like sometimes I'll like flip an image so I have like two, one person but they're flipped like looking each at each other or whatever. Yeah. I play around like that, but honestly, I just I just that I don't do that much anymore for the the crazy editing. I love to, but um, I just don't do it as much anymore. Yeah, and that's fine. Lightroom. That's totally fine. Do it. Um, similar to that question, how much time do you put in to editing per week? Can, can you even quantify this? <laughs> per week is really different because some weeks I do zero and some mm-hmm. weeks I do like 30. So like it <laughs> depends God. on, because like also ADHD one week I'll be like, I really love sex work. And then one week I'm like, oh my God, I just want to edit photos like the whole time. So, um, it really just depends on my dopamine level for that day. Um, yeah, but I think the full, I'll say, like, how much I edit per photo set. So, for culling and, like, organizing, that takes about, like, 30 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on how many photo sets we did, like, how many outfits we did. Mm -hmm. And then editing, the color editing, it, it really depends. It depends on how many photos. It could be, like, two hours of editing, or it could be, like, eight to ten hours of editing. Wow. Um, so you're really, like, when you're paying for a photo shoot with somebody, you're not just paying for the hourly rate that you're there with them. You're paying for the organization, the editing. Then you're paying for, you know, I've set up all these contracts. I pay for all this equipment. I pay for Lightroom. Yep. I pay for uh, all these different editing programs. You're paying for oh, Everything. Everything that I've put into this. So, um, <laughs> uh, the time I put a lot of time into stuff, and some people are a lot quicker. Some people take a lot longer. It's just everybody's different. Everybody's Everybody different. does it. Yep, everybody's different. But that's just how it works for me. Um, and like I said, I like to really take my time on photos. So, like, I'll sit on it for a day, come back, or a couple days, just because I need I some that. time to like refresh. Yeah, no, no that's, a, that's really important. That's so yeah. important. There was one time, <laughs> one time I was working on a photo for like 30 minutes straight and doing beauty. This is when I was still doing some beauty editing. And I was zooming in, zooming in, just getting every little detail. And then I zoomed out. And the f- I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> it was like the, the, the people, their eyes were completely just white. Like just... <laughs> bright as hell no texture on their skin uh it was the worst thing i've ever done in my life so (laughs) that from then on i've been like okay we take we step back and then we go (laughs) we take breaks we refresh we come back with a clear mind different perspective yes that's a good new new day new editing new mind so (laughs) last question is what ways do you get in the mood to help you edit? Such as like tea, music, a bowl, dab, whatever. Oh, love this. Um, usually, okay. I have two me's. One me sits in silence <laughs> and is completely hyper focused. And I'm like, I can't even get up to pee. I, I don't, yep. I, I have water next to me. That's it. You know, <laughs> that's when I'm like, who. I'm in the hyper-focus mode. Then there's other me where I'm blasting music. I'm singing along. I'm having a good time. I'm (laughs) bopping my head while I'm editing. Um, Usually I love a good tea um, or I I have a bubbly, literally my beverages (laughs) all the time, all the time. I bet you understand. Hydration. (laughs) I do. I actually, so because... I don't know if this is 100% true, but it works for me. But (laughs) I actually smoke before I work. I know some people can't do that, but it actually puts me into hyper-focus mode. So when I'm smoking, I'm like, oh, oh, I'm so excited. I am creative. I'm so cool. Um, It just really, and then like there's 30 minutes that go by and I'm like, wait, I've been like editing just so hyper-focused. So I do, (laughs) I do smoke some weed. Um... But yeah, it's, it really depends on the the day that I'm having, I guess. But um, I do like to try to make it fun. But then other times it's just work. I am in the zone. Yeah. (laughs) 
auto zone. <laughs> Fair enough. That's like me in yeah. editing too. Like for me, it's like if I'm really need to hyper focus, I need to listen to music that's like the lo-fi chill music to study to on YouTube slash like Apple or Spotify music, and it yep. has to have no lyrics. I'm just like in the zone, do my thing, and I don't move. Or <laughs> it's another thing if it's like a pretty easy podcast, and I'll like maybe listen to a podcast, but it's like really hard to concentrate on two conversations. I'm like, no, none of this. Give me music, instrumentals only. <laughs> so it's cool yeah, to hear your like, process. <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. Like sometimes I try to watch a TV show or something, but like my brain, I'm thinking inside it. So I'm like, this needs yes. to be more purple. This needs to be blah, 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 blah. And then you miss like a whole thing and then you go oh. back five minutes and then oh you start God. working again and you're like, wait, I literally just missed the part I tried to listen to. <laughs> so um, I don't really watch shows, but I definitely will listen to music. For yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 I'm the same way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, another, the most important question, Cactus. Yes. As we are, unfortunately, at the end of our conversation today. No! But you know what question it is coming. Where can we all find you and slash how can we book you? <laughs> oh. Well, um, my photography page, uh, the best way you can find me is Instagram.com slash cactus with a K, camera with a K. So Cactus Camera. Uh, I'm also Cactus Camera on Twitter. Um, I You can find me as a model, uh, Cactus Cutie dot com or beacons they dot ai slash cactus cutie <laughs> whatever um and see some because i've also done some modeling work too so i do have modeling photos um and i also do sex work but um i would love to shoot with some wonderful people especially you uh Anybody who's listening, feel free to contact me. If you are in the Southwest area, I am out of Arizona, but I do travel. Um, and I'm actually, I haven't announced this to my fans yet, but uh, I'm doing a like summer tour. So I'm going to be uh, going around uh, quite a few areas in the United States and uh, trying to work with how many people I can. So that's, that's going to be fun. Yeah. Cause I feel like I really enjoy the travel aspect and the meeting new people aspect. So if you want to shoot totally. with me, see if I'm going to be in your area um, and see all the cute people that I take pictures of. Cause they're also really nice people. Love that. Oh my gosh. Everyone go book Cactus or at least go give her a follow. Subscribe to all of the things that she does because she has a lot of things. And <laughs> maybe I'll see I'm you. because <laughs> I would love that. Yeah, we have to make something happen. Maybe we will make something happen. But we'll yes. talk after we stop recording. But yeah. <laughs> all those links are in the show notes. So do your part, everyone, and follow all the things. But also, if you feel like also get in contact with me for some reason um with any questions comments about the show whether you like them or not again it is stripped by sia on x i'm most active on there also on instagram stripped by sia podcast on instagram um you could also go to my website pay or not patreon but yes you could also go to patreon patreon.com slash stripped by sia but also striftbysia.com. And that's where you can kind of pitch yourself to me. Um, yes, I do say pitch because it is a pitch. I would like to hear what your episode is. Like Cactus wonderfully did. She gave me an outline of what she wanted to speak about. Um, that's really, really um, important. I am casting for season seven. I am actively looking for new topics and ideas to explore with new folks to bring onto the show for season seven, which will be starting soon i think just before the summer so get at me and we'll be in touch but for the meantime like review rate five stars if you want to on apple and spotify um i'd love to hear all these wonderful reviews they're funny and really interesting for me to read but i'm rambling now so catch me in and whoever it is gonna be next week for another brand new episode next sunday dropping at pacific standard time at midnight Okay, that's all for now. Cactus are so lovely to see you again. I know! <laughs> wow, that was really high pitch. I know! <laughs> it was really great. I'm so, thank you so much for having me on. I've been wanting to talk about photography stuff for a while and like share this information. So thank you for giving me a way to share it. 
You're so welcome. I hope that people have some good takeaways from the episode and hopefully, again, leaving this episode with an informed approach about photography that you choose and whatnot. So, thank it. you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> You're listening to Stripped by Sia, hosted, produced, and edited by Steph Sia. Music by Ted D. Graphic design by Maria Bellandarama, and photography by Ian Davern.